is a Kate Spade coin purse for $20. That's really cute. Next to it is a Gucci wallet for $150. That's probably a $600 wallet, I'd say, but it's quite old. It looks like it's maybe vintage or maybe at least 20 or 30 years old. Well, guys, I'm finally making a video about buying vintage Louis Vuitton in Japan, or at least uh, not necessarily vintage Louis Vuitton, but just luxury items in general that you can buy in Japan. Now, I've talked about this several times before on my channel that I have found some incredible bargains in the past in Japan. I've picked up some beautiful Louis Vuitton bags that I would consider to be in very good condition. In Japan, they're a lot fussier about the condition of their used items. So when you go into a consignment store, for example, where someone will take in their secondhand Louis Vuitton and the store will sell it on their behalf and then the store takes commission and then the person that sold it obviously gets the rest. Usually what they'll do, they will assess the item and if there's any scuffs or marks or like if the handles are dirty or something like that, they won't get a very good price for it. Now in Australia, I feel like we don't really care so much about things like that. You know, if we manage to pick up a Louis Vuitton handbag for half the price because it's got a little scratch on it, well, that's fantastic. So for example, if you were to buy a Louis Vuitton Alma handbag, knew they could go anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000, depending on what type of leather, if it's epi leather, if it's a monogram, if it's a demi bean, demi azure print, what year that it was made, things like that. You're looking at thousands of dollars. Now, picture buying a secondhand bag in Japan and you walk into a store and you see one and you think, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Why is that only $500 instead of two and a half thousand? It looks brand new. And then you'll go to buy it and behind the counter, they'll say to you, they'll pick it up and then they'll, they'll start pointing out little things that you didn't even notice. They'll point out a little scratch or they'll point out maybe it's a little bit dirty on the handles and they'll open it and maybe there's a little bit of a tear on the inside and that's why it's so much cheaper. So today, this video is all about showing you guys where in Tokyo you can find used vintage luxury items. Sometimes they're even brand new. It just depends where you're going and what you're looking for. I have four particular items I'm on the hunt for. If I manage to find one of these items at a good price, I will buy it today. But I come to Japan a fair bit and if I don't find it on this trip, I might find it on the next trip. So I'm not in a desperate hurry, but there's four items I'm looking for. I'm looking for maybe a Dior saddlebag, which I used to hate the design of, but it's really started to grow on me now. Maybe a Louis Vuitton backpack of some sort. A Chanel bag is like my dream, but Chanel bags are so expensive. Also, there's this new one called the Louis Vuitton multi pochette accessories. That is a stunning bag combination. Now, brand new, I mean, that only came out this year, but you do sometimes find brand new items secondhand. Maybe they've used them for a couple of months and then they try to sell it. You know, maybe they've come into financial difficulties and they need to sell something that's brand new. So a lot of these stores I'm gonna be showing you today, you will find a brand new Louis Vuitton items for half the price. You'll find secondhand Louis Vuitton items for a third of the price. You'll find Gucci, Dior, Prada, Balenciaga, Birkin bags by Hermé. Birkin bags are still very expensive, but um, right now uh, I'm starting off the day in Koenji. Koenji is a, an outer suburb. It's outside of Tokyo. It takes about 20 minutes. You can go on the JR line to Koenji Station or you can go to Shin Koenji on the Metro line. Shin Koenji, I prefer to go there because it's a really beautiful walk from Shin Koenji Station all the way up to Koenji. You have these beautiful little streets and they're full of secondhand stores. If you're interested in the luxury items, occasionally you will come across a store that sells luxury items really, really cheap. Like this case here, Louis Vuitton case that I found for about $40. Also, this little coin purse was $100. If you keep walking all the way up this street, you do eventually get to this uh, undercover shopping mall and there's a really great secondhand Louis Vuitton luxury good dealer here. Now, in the outer suburbs, things are going to be a bit cheaper than what they are in Shinjuku, for example, but you will have limited items. They won't have anywhere near as much or you probably won't find new items as much as you would in Shinjuku. So later on today, I'll take you to Shinjuku. I actually, I don't know the name of the stores I've, I just walk past them and I see them I know where the good ones are I know where the overpriced ones are so once we get there I'll be able to show you the shop front and I'll put some map locations in the description box below in case you want to find them yourself Shinjuku there's countless countless stores that sell luxury items. But this one in Koenji that we're heading to now, I don't know if we'll find anything necessarily. At least I'll get to show you the sort of things that you can expect to find. There's also one of these pawn shops in my local place where I'm staying, which is Akasaka. This little pawn shop here, they don't have huge amounts of stock, but they are cheaper than Shinjuku, I would say, if you're looking at older items. Obviously, if the items are newer, they're going to be a bit more expensive, but you could pick up a bag for $200 to $500 that in Australia, at least, we would 
consider in excellent condition, but maybe in Japan they would think it's not so great. Now, some people are going to be asking about whether these products are authentic or not, and the thing is, you can pretty much shop confidently in Japan because when they go into these consignment stores, they always authenticate the item. You won't get a certificate saying that it's an authentic item, but they won't accept items that are fake and they will not sell them because that's the store's reputation on the line. They're not going to sell something that's fake. I've never bought a fake in Japan. I've also bought things, taken them back to Australia, had them authenticated at the Louis Vuitton store, and I've never had a fake item. Even though the price might look like it could be a fake item because it's so cheap, it's probably just because in Japan they think that it's a little bit too dirty to be sold at a, a higher price. So anyway, with that, let's have a little walk through Koenji. There's a couple of shops here I want to show you. There's pawn shops, but then there's also secondhand stores like Modoff, for example. And Modoff has a huge selection of Louis Vuitton and Gucci and all these other brands as well. So with that, let's head in and I'll show you all the stores. So our first stop in Koenji is Second Street behind me. Now if you watched my thrifting in Japan video, you will recognize this. I've had a lot of comments from people telling me they visited this store after they watched my video and they loved it. Not only is this place great for secondhand clothing, but they have a massive selection of used luxury items. So let's head inside. So tempting. This is a Louis Vuitton handle bag. I think that this is called an ellipse. Ellipse, I'm pretty sure. I have a slightly smaller one of this that I got for about $250. This is $350 US dollars. I reckon it's so cheap because it's a little bit dirty just around the rim there and the handle, see how it's tarnished? I don't know if you'll be able to see. But see how it's a little bit dirty where you hold it. See how it's, the color is lighter up here and then it gets dark. So someone's been holding that and it's gotten a little bit dirty. So that's probably why it's so cheap. But you can take leather cleaner and clean that right up. And also the brassware is pretty tarnished, but if you polished that, it'd come up good as new. This is probably maybe a 15, 20 year old bag, I would say, but it's an MM size, which is a bigger size. I love this bag so much, it's beautiful and that's an excellent price. In Australia that would be about a thousand dollars at least. any luck in that store, nothing uh, of the four things that I'm looking for, but uh, we're just about to come up on a second store now. This one is called Atlantis. This is, uh, they always seem to have some really good stuff in here, but it is a little bit more expensive than where we just were at Second Street, but they definitely have much cooler stuff. Last time I went into this store, they had a key ball, which is that massive bag, and it was in the Da Vinci design, so they had one of those here. They have really interesting things. I'm really excited to see what they have. There's the bag I was talking about. It's that key pool. It's the limited edition Da Vinci. Oh, it's such a cool bag. It's like $15,000 though. Cute little Celine bag down there. That one is pretty expensive though. It's over a grand. Uh, there's a Prada bag down there, about $800 for that one. So like I said, this place is a little bit more expensive, but bear in mind, these things brand new are like three or four grand. If I, if I don't see anything else, I think I might get that bag. It's so pretty. And also, of course, the Moschino. Everyone loves this motorbike. It, that's not for sale anymore. You can't find that anywhere either. So the predicament that I'm in, I could get this and I really want it. It's about $2,000, which is great. I think new, it actually says on here, new, 534,600. Um, but then also if I'm going to spend that sort of money, $2,000, there's other things that I could potentially get. For example, you know, like that Alma. I've been wanting a little Alma BB for ages. And that's, you know, half the price. And that's really, really cute. For a little bit more, you can get a limited edition 
gold, but at least I know that it's here. Even this, so many people I know want this bag. Very popular bag. There's a Chanel backpack back there. And I just, I love the way that this sparkles. Look at it, it's so pretty for $2,000. There's so many different styles here. Okay, so I finished up in the shop. I was very, very close to buying that, but that was basically the first proper store that I went into selling those items. Uh, I haven't even been to Shinjuku yet, and I know from last time I was in Shinjuku, I found so many great bags. I had to have some self-control, and uh, I said, I will come back. I said, I'll think about it. And he gave me their business card, and apparently all the items they have in the shop are available on their eBay store. So I'll put their store down below. He said that they have to charge a little bit extra on eBay because of the eBay commission. But if you want anything, if you send them an email directly, they'll just organize the sale privately and you don't have to pay the fees for eBay. That was a really nice shop. The man that worked in there spoke fluent English. He was so helpful. They even gave me a special deal because the price that was on the bag was the original price. And then he said to me that he could negotiate it down. So it got down to about 2000 Australian dollars. Now, the reason that I didn't get it is because I did a quick Google search and I actually found on eBay in Australia the exact same bag for $1,100. Now the main issue is you don't actually know from these sellers on eBay if it's going to be genuine or not. It could just be a bag from Wish and as we saw in my Wish haul I was able to get Dionysus bags that looked pretty legit. I feel much more confident buying from a store like this because it's all authentic and you know genuine. I'm going to head to Shinjuku and have a look around there and if I don't find anything I'll come back tomorrow and I'll get that bag because that was a really good find. <laughs> By the way guys if you do come to Koenji this little sushi shop called Smart Sushi is right down the road from that secondhand store I was just in. They do great sushi here and all the plates are about a hundred and something yen. I highly recommend it. See all the plates are 110 yen, $1.10 US. I love it in here and I can't resist every time I walk past so I'm gonna grab a bite to eat before I go to Shinjuku because sushi in Shinjuku is expensive. Here it comes. Okay, just finished up dinner and uh, just before we head to Shinjuku, I want to show you Modoff quickly, which is another store that I did feature in my uh, thrifting in Japan video. This is a fantastic shop. There's a whole bunch of these around Tokyo. This is the Koenji branch, but you can find them in a fair few different places. Now they have a wall that's got luxury items in it. So we're going to have a quick look. I don't think I'm going to find what I want in here though, because most of this stuff is normally quite old, you know, 10, 20 years old. Uh, the store we were just in though, they had lots of modern things. Anyway, so I don't think we're going to find exciting new things but I just want to show you anyway because you can get some really good deals in here. So they had a couple of interesting things in that store, but nothing for me. Some of the stuff was cheap and some of it seemed a little bit overpriced. But uh, anyway, we're on our way to Shinjuku now. It's getting late and it's getting cold, although actually, well, it's, it's dark and it's like 5 p.m. So, I mean, that's late to me considering I just want to go home and curl up in the warmth. But uh, I will stick it out to try and finish off this video in one day because I don't want it to drag on. So in Shinjuku, there's so many different stores. I will try to get to as many of them as I can before they shut. If I can't get to all of them before they close, I will have to go back tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to showing you three in particular that not many people seem to know about. They're like little, little secrets because they're not on the main street and I think that you guys are gonna love them. So uh, I'll catch you in Shinjuku.
haven't experienced confusion until you've experienced Shinjuku Station. This is the busiest station I've been to in my entire life and I never used the same exit twice because there's so many exits to this place. Uh, I will have to Google how many, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was like 30 or 40 exits. It's very, very difficult to navigate your way through Shinjuku. So what I suggest that you do is just get up to the ground somehow. Just get up there. Just find a staircase and get to the ground and then navigate from there because it's so difficult to navigate down in here. There's so many people, it's impossible. So just get upstairs first and then I'll give you directions from there. Finding the exit for Kabukicho, I find uh, this is a bit of an easier exit to use because once I come out this exit, I at least know where I am. Behold, Shinjuku. Okay, so I tend to avoid Shinjuku if I can. It's just too busy for my liking. I've never been to New York City, but this is what I imagine New York City must look like. There's a lot of bright lights, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of noise, there's screens with advertisements playing. But anyway, if you're looking for the luxury items and uh, you can't find what you want in the smaller towns, this is where you come. This is basically the main street that I'm coming up to now. There are so many secondhand stores here. I think the best way that I can do this is to put all the names in the description box below with timestamps and Google map links so you can find the locations because it's way too difficult for me to say to you, you know, turn right here and turn left here because this place is like a maze and you will never find it. So uh, just if you've got portable Wi-Fi, just uh, click on the Google map links and you'll find the way there. But look at this crossing. Okay, so our first stop in Shinjuku is right behind me here. This is Komehyo. Now, Komehyo has a huge amount of stores there everywhere. This is the Shinjuku branch. It does have a couple of different floors. If you don't know that there's a second floor down below, you wouldn't go down there, but there's some really nice bags on the second floor. So make sure you head down. The stuff in this store is very high end though. Last time I was here, I saw one of those iridescent backpacks by Louis Vuitton. Uh, everything looks new in here. I don't think that they accept poor quality secondhand items. They're mostly brand new. Someone may have used once or twice and now they're selling it on. So uh, let's have a look inside. I don't know if they'll let me film in here either, but let's, let's see how we go. That's a $700 bag just there, that one. I see a really cute LV heart shaped purse. That looks adorable. Uh, so guys, I was very, very tempted to get that little pink love heart bag. But when I looked it up on Google, it was only $100 more in Australia brand new than it was in there. Now that was brand new condition. Uh, there was nothing wrong with that one. It was in you know the best condition possible. But if I was going to spend that much money, I think I would rather just get it from the store. Not that it's available in the store anymore. That was a limited edition 2019. Just make sure that you're Googling things before you jump into buying anything. Okay guys, this is an excellent store here. Now this is called Daikokuya. I believe this is also a chain. Uh, Dai Kokuya, <laughs> funny, funny name. Dai is the kanji for big, Koku is the kanji for black, and Ya is the kanji for... Uh, I think that's shop, I think. Big black shop, perhaps? Anyway, this place is uh, two stories high. They have heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff in here. Highly recommend that you drop by here. I've never bought anything here myself, but I do still recommend it because it's really just very fun to look at. They always have interesting things in here. Vuitton backpack. That's a limited edition one. How much is that? That is 228,000 yen, which is probably going to be two and a half thousand dollars for that. But that's a huge backpack for that price. Get a lot more bang for your buck for a backpack like that than the handbag I was looking at before. This Celine bag back here is 128,000 yen. Now for that bag, that is excellent. I know a lot of people with that bag, particularly in the corporate world, they love this bag so much. That's a very good price. I'm not gonna go for that because it's definitely not my style, but I know a lot of my friends would probably freak out because that's less than half of what some of my friends have paid for that exact same bag. There's a bunch of Chanel. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that, the boy bag. Lots of girls want this, that's 368,000 yen. There's another Chanel bag over there, that's a calf skin or whatever they call it. That one's 660,000. I mean, some of these new though would be unbelievably expensive. This little one here, 
That's an excellent price for Chanel. I have never seen a piece of Chanel that cheap before. I don't know what's wrong with that. Maybe there's a big stain on the back of it. Oh, there you go. There's some marks down here. I can see some scuff marks. That's an excellent price for that. There's an upstairs section here too. Now the stuff upstairs is uh, the sort of older stuff. It's not quite as good as the stuff downstairs, but look how much there is. Look at the selection. It's $1,000. That's a really cute bag. Oh, I love it. The trick is with stores like this that have a lot, you need to look at every single item. So that one's $300. That's mm, okay. Not in great condition, but you really need to look at all of them because sometimes in among the others, you'll find one that'll be super, super cheap. See, that's 700. Little backpack up here, 500. Okay, see here, this is $270, this one. Obviously, this is a little bit older. It's a little bit sort of scuffed up around here. This is a bigger bag than this one. And this one is $500 because this one's obviously in better condition. So there you go, picking up a 200 and something dollar Louis Vuitton bag. So guys, this is a three-story commercial here, here. This one, I believe, is a men's store. Yeah, I could, yep, this is all men's. So on the door over there, it's got men's shoes, men's import, men's casual trend handbags and men's business. So there are handbags in here. I can see them all in the front there. Okay, so we've got uh, our next place, which is Sekine. Now Sekine, they are also a chain and uh, there's a couple of these around the place, but this one here, I have bought handbags in here before. This one, I find that they accept products that aren't in very good condition here, which means that you can get things a little bit cheaper, but they also have a huge selection of brand new things that have never been used. Like uh, for example, all these things here that are all wrapped up in plastic. These things are in excellent condition. Look at this, this is 1,700, 1,600. There's even Louis Vuitton AirPods over there. Back there is a rose purse that I've been eyeing off for ages. That's $500, that one probably 600 Australian dollars. Last time I went to buy one of those, I was going to pay 700 for it. Uh, and then I thought to myself, I'll go have a cup of coffee and think about it. And then I left Japan and didn't buy it. And now that I've come back, there's another one, but it's cheaper. Hmm, that's very tempting. I'm gonna come back to this second A place because there's a purse in here I really, really liked and a handbag as well. Uh, I just need to keep looking around though because every time you go into a new store, you find new things that may possibly be better, so we'll come back here later. Okay, now directly opposite Sekine is a store just behind me here called Kabukiya. Now Kabukiya is a couple of levels as well. They have some really nice bags in here, but I find that this place is a little bit more expensive, but they negotiate. They actually have an ad playing at the front of the store in English, and it says, we will not only give you tax-free items, but we will give you more of a discount. You just have to ask. You have to say, is that the best you can do? So you can get some really good prices in here. Tax-free service, but with many more discount. We also have English-speaking staff at your service. We hope to make your shopping experience more enjoyable. Tender as the lamb skin, but still very good. Mm -hmm. If you consider a personal use for practical reasons. Wow, um, I would have looked in there a little bit more, but she was very pushy. I don't like when people are pushy, you know, salespeople. Normally they're not, but she saw when I walked in, my face lit up when I saw that Dionysus bag, and she, she kind of like jumped on me. She thought, oh, there's a potentially a sale here, but little did she know that I found that bag in the same condition in Koenji. That was a couple of hundred dollars more for exactly the same thing. 
thing, but that's what's going to happen when you come to Shinjuku. But like I said, you get a lot more variety in Shinjuku, so... Just here, this is directly around the corner from where we just were. This one has a basement, which has bags and jewellery. Watches are on the second floor. Main level here has all the handbags and everything. Huge amount of Louis Vuitton in here. You can see it all through the window there. I really like this store. I've never bought anything here though. I find it's a little bit more expensive than everywhere else, but they have great variety. And I can see the iridescent bag over there too. Last time I went down these stairs, I almost spent $2,000 on a Chanel handbag. Yeah. And then I went away to think about it. And uh, then I found something else and I didn't end up getting it. But if it's still here, I may, may just consider it. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? It's so cute. Ah, see, this is what I was talking about. They have all these like limited edition things. That Neverfull is limited edition too. That's a very good price for that bag. And this Chanel bag was here last time I was here. And I wanted to get this so bad because it's the most beautiful Chanel bag I've ever seen. But that is about 5,000 Australian dollars, which is actually not bad considering it's Chanel because Chanel holds its value and it's a really, really beautiful bag. But it's a little bit beyond my price range. I mean, maybe a lot beyond my price range. It's a really cute little Dior bag there in pink. Isn't it just so beautiful? Oh, it's so nice. I can't justify six thousand. My my maximum budget, maximum maximum. I was like, oh, maybe two. Maybe if I find something for two, I will buy it. So just down the road from that one, that store was on the corner just there, and now we've got one here. Now this one is pretty well known. This store is called Ginzo. Now this is right on the corner of literally the busiest street in Shinjuku. Look at this. This is uh, that's the Toho Cinema right there. That's famous cinema. It's got the Godzilla on it up the top there. Uh, and this store, Ginzo, is right here. So I feel like because they're in a prime location, they do charge that little bit more for their products. But they do have some really, really cool things, including a huge selection of Birkin bags and a saddle bag. Look at that, there's a saddle bag. That's the first one that I've seen so far. Not the color I'm looking for. Also, not the price I'm looking for either. But uh, look, we've even got some Louis Vuitton Supreme, Louis Vuitton foam case. I don't even know what that is. I think that may even be diamonds as a, an hourglass. Uh, is that an hourglass with diamonds in it? There's a lot of people in here. It's a really, really popular store. Look at this Birkin. This Birkin is three million yen. Birkin Central here, ladies and gentlemen. This is, that's Hermé. That one there is not a Birkin. That is a Birkin. This is an $8,000 Birkin. So first thing I noticed when I came in, there's a Chanel bag I've been looking for. But that one is 3,300 US dollars. Definitely out of my price range. This here isn't a bad price at all. This is called a Noe. This is an Epi. Now this is a vintage piece here. It's $400, but I think in Australia this would be about 800. $2,000 for this backpack here. An adorable little Alma BB. That's a good price. That's actually a pretty good price. That's a Deauville. Now, I bought a Deauville for $200. That is $1,500-ish, but it's in brand new condition. That's not bad. <laughs> We've also got a downstairs here. Japanese staircases are very steep. Oh, wow. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. A 
Okay, so I didn't find anything for me in this store. However, I did spot one of those little Gucci Dionysus bags. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive than the last place that I found it at. Now, uh, we're going across the very, very big intersection now. And uh, this is going to take us to almost Kabukicho. We're heading to the Toho Cinema. You can identify it by the giant Godzilla head on top of it. Uh, this is a very, very busy part of town. It stays open all night. You can find restaurants open here until 3, 4, 5 a.m. Some of them are even 24 hours. But uh, there's a store down here on the corner that I'm taking you to. The guys in here, they have the coolest products, I think, out of everywhere that I've been. These guys have the most unique items and probably the newest as well. So uh, let's head in. So the store I'm taking you guys to now is called Okura. Now Okura is just here on the corner, right under the Godzilla up there. And uh, there's a great restaurant nearby that we're going to for dinner. But uh, this place, easy to identify, it's got bags on all, all the windows. Let's have a look from the outside first and see what we can spot. So right off the bat I'm spotting this design which is brand new. They've only released this in the last couple of months. That's a $3,000 bag. I have never seen this one before, but that's an $8,000 bag for some crazy reason. We've got a bunch of different Noe's here. We've also got, oh look, there's that same bag I spotted that one in Koenji. I think that the Koenji one may have been cheaper than that one. This is a really nice Alma here. That's a $700 bag. Over on this side, we've got some limited edition pieces, like this little backpack here that I did spot. I think that this is cheaper than it was in that store earlier. This is an interesting speedy here. Looks like a limited edition. It's got these cute little designs all over it, like that. A thousand dollars down here for this one. We've got a, a speedy over this side for one thousand four hundred dollars. That's still a lot. I wouldn't pay any more than five hundred for a speedy. Over on the other side here, we've got some interesting looking bags. We've got some Dior bags, some interesting Louis Vuitton cases. I've never seen some of these before. Okay, I think it's time to head inside. So these things in these buckets are normally on sale. What have we got here? Well, this is a really nice little one here. This is 500 as well for this one. Cute little Chanel bag over here. I managed to get, uh, I got this purse when I was here three years ago and I think I got it for $150 because it was it, on the inside, it had all these stains from people using it and their coins going into it so it wasn't in very good condition. Can you imagine putting one of these through the airport? Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, saddlebag. Not the right colour scheme, I want the pink saddlebag. This one is a good price though, if that had been the pink one I would have jumped on that straight away. <laughs> So I was actually looking at getting this bag here in Australia. I came very close to buying it brand new. That is less than I would have paid for it in Australia, but still I don't think I can justify getting that. Okay, so I didn't find anything in that store that I wanted either, but uh, I'm feeling like I need a bit of a break now because there's a lot of uh, walking around in circles in shops and it's making me dizzy. So we're going to stop for a break and then I'll hit up a couple of other stores but I've basically showed you my favourite places to go. The other shops I'm going to show you from now on, they are a little bit more expensive. They do still have a good range of things. And also guys, there's a lot more stores in Shinjuku than the ones that I'm showing you. I'm just showing you ones that I've been to that I have found really good items at and uh, you can sometimes find a really good bargain. If you just look close enough, you can find things that are a lot cheaper than others. Uh, sometimes stores like this one, they only accept things in really good condition. Other stores will accept things in any condition and they'll just flog them off. Like that one that I kind of got scared out of, you know that one with the lady that was too chatty. That place, they will accept things in worse condition and they keep them at the front counter and you can get stuff for like $50 to $200. I was, I was frightened out of that store because she was too talkative. So anyway, time for a break and then we'll hit up the others. These stores usually close at around 9 p.m. So you've got plenty of time. No need to race around Shinjuku looking for Louis Vuitton. Uh, but also don't feel like you need to get something when you're here because you can also get things on Zen Market, for example. And you can get stuff on Zen Market a lot cheaper than you can get in these stores. They jack the price up because it's a touristy area. 
I can make a video about Zen Market later if you want, but basically Zen Market you can buy directly from Japan and you can get luxury items, you know, 100 bucks, 200, 300. You do see things that are quite expensive, but more often than not you're finding super cheap things on Zen Market. So don't feel like you have to get it in Shinjuku. You can go out to the suburbs, you can find pawn shops in other suburbs. Anyway, time for a break and then I will show you the rest of the stores in Shinjuku that I know of. <laughs> パパ。まだまだ遊び盛りのれ。ランズン大人じゃないもん。今日も弟の思りどんどん不満が<笑> Because I am a bucker des, I have unfortunately led us all astray. The store is all closed at 9 p.m. and Ima Kuji Han des. Unfortunately, they are closed now. I spent too long eating delicious fried foods and now the luxury stores are closed. But you know what? It's probably for the best because it means I just saved myself a solid $2,000 because I was well on my way to buying something. But I've just come out of the restaurant and behind me here is another store. Look, I know the lights are too bright and you probably can't see. Hang on. Shoshimachi kurasai. So here's a store here. This is directly opposite the Toho building. Uh, this is called Shellbird, second-hand luxury brand shop. And in the window here, we've got some Louis Vuitton Supreme. We have a cute little Alma. This Alma is $1,300. We've got for $1,700 a big rainbow bag. There's a Gucci bag there for $1,500. We've got some Balenciaga down here for $800. We've got a Gucci bag, $1,500. We've got a Chanel bag, 700. Another Chanel bag, 3,000. Look, it's Ted. Hello, Ted. Ted's all blinged out in his Gucci necklace here, looking like a pimp. So the one bag that really stood out to me tonight was the Gucci Dionysus bag that I found in Koenji, but I also found it here in Shinjuku and it was a lot cheaper in Koenji. So at the end of the day guys, it is definitely cheaper to buy secondhand luxury items than it is to buy new ones. But you should always check the price of the new ones because sometimes the secondhand ones are only, you know, $100 cheaper than a brand new one depending on the condition that it's in. When you buy it new, at least you have a guarantee from the store and you also get a warranty as well. But if you're saving thousands of dollars, it's definitely worth it. Now obviously I didn't buy anything in today's video. I have been here in the past many times before and purchased items. One time I found a Louis Vuitton handbag for $200 because it had a couple of scuffs on it and it wasn't in great condition. And uh, I just saw exactly the same bag today for $1,000 because it was in better condition than the one that I bought. It really depends. It's luck of the draw when you come here because you might find something that's not in great condition, but to you it's probably in great condition. This camera is very heavy. My arm feels like it's about to fall off. I'm walking into hundreds of people because Shibuya is very busy. If you like today's video, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to find out where any of the stores are from today's video, just uh, check the description box below because I've got all the information listed there. It's raining and I'm holding my camera out and it's uh, getting wet. So give me a thumbs up to show your support. Look at the things I do for you guys. I'm actually kind of glad I didn't buy anything today because if I had bought something, 
My wallet would be $2,000 lighter right now and I don't think I would feel so good about that. If you've been looking for specific luxury items for a long time but couldn't justify buying them at the full price, you may very well find it somewhere in Shinjuku or in Koenji or even in the town that you're staying in if they have a pawn shop. Keep your eyes peeled, keep looking. Don't just jump on something because it's there. It's not gonna sell immediately. If you need some time to think about it, take some time. These things, they don't sell like hotcakes. A perfect example is that beautiful purple Chanel bag. I was here four months ago and that Chanel bag was there. Funnily enough, actually the lady in that shop, I wasn't recording at the time, but she said to me, have you been here before? And I said, yes I have. And she said, you came here with your mother, didn't you? You're the one that likes the pastel things. But wow, you have a good memory. She remembered me because I was looking at that purple Chanel bag last time I was here. Now that's a $6,000 bag and not every man and his dog has $6,000 to spend on a bag. So take some time to think about it. If you spot something that you really like, don't feel like you have to buy it immediately. Get the price. Write it down, go home, go back to your hotel, go back to your Ryokan, go back to your love hotel, wherever you're staying, and uh, do a quick Google search and see how much it would cost if you were to buy it in your own country. See the price if it was brand new. See the price if you were to buy it on eBay. I think the moral of the story is that you can get some really excellent bargains, but not everything is going to be cheap. That's enough from me. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Give us a thumbs up if you did. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.